So now, on the carving with the one eight bits, and we're doing a, a, a welcome to our home sign on pine. Now, it's, I know some people are struggling when it comes to carving the pine. Uh, it's chipping, it's splitting out, or they're having problems with the wood. One of the, uh, I find one of the most important things is the or orientation of the board, where the grain goes. Now you can see how the rings are going. When I'm routing, I want to go through as few of those as possible to get a consistent cut. If I have my sign this way, and I'm cutting, especially in areas like that, you're going through multiple different grain layers at one time, and each one of those could potentially be a different uh, uh, strength. So one could be, be, you could be traveling down through quite a, a, a hard grain, and then all of a sudden hit an easy, easy one and the, the blade will jump. So whenever I orient my boards, I make sure I've got this type of direction of grain. I hope that's coming out. So it's a simple welcome sign. I'm going to do it all outset, and I will do the uh, uh, background clean out with chisels, I believe. But hopefully it uh, goes okay. Okay, for this I'm going to be using my Dualta 262, and I'm using 1 8 bits. I know there's been some questions about it. Alright, so that is the collet and nut that fits right in to the bottom of the 262. That's the quarter inch collet. So I'm using the 1 8 spits and you have the collet reducer. So that slides right in there. Yeah, If you leave it, 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 it's, it doesn't go in there snug, it's just loose. So you get the 1 8 bit goes into the collet reducer. See it goes in there quite firmly. That slides into that. And then it just screws in. Yes, it is unplugged. Now you can see I leave the reducer just a little bit proud. Just because, really. It gives me an extra little bit of depth. And once I tighten that up, we are ready to go. Okay, while I'm carving this sign, I'm going to do it all outset. So what I'll do is I'm going to do a, a line around it. I'm not going to try to meet that uh, edge first. Take away the material away from it first and then I'll come back a second time and touch up to the line. Something else I want to touch on, I never push the router unless it's a very small section. I always pull. You might have a lot more control over it than that, and you can see where you're going. Okay, that's uh gives you a idea of how I do it. Now, I don't know if you noticed on the time lapse, it's a bit difficult. I always find the high point, the furthest point away from me, on a letter, and pull either left or right. That way, I don't have to ever come up this way and start catching edges. Well, I'm going to finish doing the outline of these layers. All these rooms are done, and then I will do some close-ups and show the clean-out. Okay, that's most of the, uh, uh, the fine work done. There's a few places in here, like between the U and the R, which I want to get a little bit more depth to. So I've swapped from the 30 to a 15. That's a lot finer. So I can still get the depth I want in the very small spaces.
Okay, that is all the clear up for around the uh, big welcome. Is all done. Now it's to get into the little bits on the hour home. Okay, doing it on the smaller letters is going to take a little bit more of a delicate touch. You're going to see me lifting the router quite often because what I'm going to do is I was going to get down to the fine point, but I'm not going to adjust the depth of the blade. So I'm going to get the rest of that done. I'll show you guys again. Okay, that's most of the uh, uh, the fine work done. There's a few places in here, like between the U and the R, which I want to get a little bit more depth to. So I've swapped from the 30 to a 15. That's a lot finer. So I can still get the depth I want in the very small spaces. Now I'm going to switch bits and I'm going to use a spiral upcut router and I'm going to give myself a barrier around all these letters so when I come back with the chisels uh, there's less chance of me whacking one. Okay, that should give you an idea of what I'm trying to do. Let's give myself a barrier around there, so when I'm coming with the chisel, I can remove all this area, and there's less chance of hitting my routed bits. Okay, so I've hogged out a lot of that material. It gives me a good barrier which to do my stuff, and I've drawn. my borderline around it, so I'm going to take the same 3-8 sp uh, spiral and cut a groove all around it and remove the rest of this wood because this is, I'm going to do a chisel effect on this. I'm not actually chiseling out the letters. Once I've got all this cleared out, the background is just going to have a light chiseled look. Okay, so now I'll flip the sign around, I'll do this edge, and I'll do that edge. Okay, so we have our border done. Now it's just going to be hogging out all of this material to get down to this level. I'm going to start using the chisels. Okay, continue with the background clear out. Got most of it down using the uh, uh, one quarter spiral. I had a small bit of chipping there. Use some uh, uh, wood filler on that. When I'm all done, you won't notice or shouldn't. Fingers crossed. Now I'm going to go back around the edge with the uh, 30 degree bit because I've gone a little bit deeper than I'd initially uh, intended. And just take the, the chamfer on each letter down to the base.
Now it's just to uh, do the background clear. I used to use a, a twin flute uh, stray bit, but I found that those are relatively not fit for purpose when it comes to doing sign work. So I use the 1.2 millimeter spiral upcuts. These work very, very nicely, give a really nice background finish, and let me get quite close to the work without damaging the letter, and gets the chips out of the way. Okay, so now I have the uh, background where I want it. I'm going to start doing the uh, chisel clear out. Right, I use um, mostly I use Kirchner chisels. This is about an eight millimeter gouge, very sharp. Uh, Work very nice. I use that one, and I'll use the uh, 14 mil gouge as well. I've got a few small ones. These are just cheapies that I'll try to get any of the little edges out with. Alright, so like I said before, this is not carving, uh, chiseling the sign. This is doing the chisel effect. So what I'm going to do is get an edge and just really lightly do a light peel. You want to try to maintain a consistent depth. Don't go too deep, or especially with pine, it'll start to tear it. And uh, other hand found is try not to do too big of a run at any one time, because you'll find you're going deeper and it will damage what you're trying to do. You see, so I'm a, not even a, a millimeter thick uh, slices. And it's hard to give me that effect, so I'm going to go uh, do the whole sign one direction, then I'm going to come back and start coming from a different angles. You see I'm holding the chisel, I'm pushing with one hand, and I'm using my other hand to limit how far the chisel will travel. I'm only letting it go travel maybe an inch, where I can maintain good control over it. Okay, when it comes to getting these little furry bits out, there's two things you can do. You can use a straight chisel or you can use a knife. Let's get to the edge. Run right in the joint. And they will come. Knife can be quite good because you can really follow the angle, but you can do the same with a chisel. And I don't use the whole bitch, I just use a corner. Using the chisel now. So with the chisel can be good because you can go a little bit deeper, but I just want to do a hair thickness. 
Don't want to go deep there at all. And again, just keeping to the very corner of the chisel. Okay, I've got the majority of the background done out with the chisels. Now I'm just going to need to go around, get out some of these little burrs, and I'm going to use a, a Dremel-like tool. Use a little ball tip. Just run around the edges as a final cleanup. Okay, with this uh, uh, tool, if I want, I could put chamfers on the edge, I could round over the letters. I'm just going to leave this like this for now. Still waiting for that to uh, cure properly. Um, then I will give it a quick sand, a quick burn, and it should be all done. Okay, I'm going to give the background a light burn now, more just to get rid of any of the last little Last little burns. Okay. Now I'm going to give it a sound and see how we look. Okay, that's a sign. I've put a V groove chamfer on it. Giving it a light burn. Now it's ready for a paint. Okay, so that's it. It's all cut out, painted, sanded. That nice chisel background effect. Hope you found this useful, helpful, informative. Like if you if you think so. Comments are welcome.